Today we'll create a displacement based breakout or sub model of a section of a transmission housing. Here we'll begin by creating our global model or our coarse grid model of our transmission housing using the NASTRAN solver environment. We'll create a test solution 101 which is our linear statics solution and we'll also turn on the element iterative solver which will help the solution to run much more quickly. We'll create a fixed constraint on one end or one flange of the housing and a load on the other end. And here we can specify whichever units we're comfortable with We'll put a thousand pound load in the minus y direction. All right, next we'll create a mesh on our housing and we'll make that a coarse grid mesh. The housing has a material already assigned to the CAD model so that material will by default be inherited to our physical properties. So we're ready to solve. Here I'll pause the video while it's solving but we can watch the convergence graph and see how the solution is progressing. Here we can see the solution has completed in 31 seconds. Let's take a look at our results. Here we can see our displacement results and our stress results. And there's an area that we're concerned of getting a more accurate look at the stress here on one of the ribs. So we'll make our breakout model here so we can get a more accurate view of our stress results in that area. So to do that, we'll first create a displacement field of our displacement results. Independent domain being Cartesian, dependent domain is 3D general. And for our values outside the table, we'll leave that as undefined. So there you can see our nodal displacement field and it's a table in the format of X, Y, and Z location and X, Y, and Z displacement. And because we got the displacements across the entire model, you can see there's quite a few pages of data. All right, so let's go ahead and save our coarse grid model. Next we'll create a new set of simulation models from our coarse grid set of simulation models. So to do that we'll save as starting with the I part and we'll give it a B suffix for breakout. Do the same for the fem and the sim. All right, so to create our breakout section, what I'm going to do is first position the work coordinate system where I'd like to define our breakout model. So I'll begin by getting it in roughly the location where I want. And then I'll use the WCS dynamics to position it more closely. Now once I have the WCS in the right location, I'll create a block which I'll use to intersect with my transmission housing to create my breakout section.
So here we'll put the origin of that block at our work coordinate system origin. And you can see here it's not quite large enough to get the blend that we were after. So let's make the block a little bit larger in the y direction. All right, that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and intersect that block with our housing. And there's our breakout model. Let's go ahead and bring that into our FEM. And instead of just hitting the update button, we don't want such a coarse mesh. So let's go ahead and edit our mesh recipe. And we'll make that a bit finer element size. All right, so that looks good. Next, let's create a new solution. That will be our linear static breakout solution. And we'll also turn on the element iterative solver so that it will solve faster. And here we'll create constraints on the edges, or actually the faces, where we've intersected the breakout model with our global model. And this enforced displacement will be the field that we recovered earlier from our global model results. So there's our nodal displacement table. And we want to apply those displacements to the faces where we're intersecting with our global model. Let's make sure we get all of them. And that's where we'll map our displacements. And the default is to use a Delaunay fast interpolator. There are other options for how you would like to interpolate under the field options in the nodal displacement table. But here we can plot a contour of those displacements that we've mapped onto those faces. And that looks good. So now we're ready to solve. All right, I've paused the video again. You can see that one took about 20 seconds to run. And we can view our results. So since we're interested in stress results, let's go right to those. And of course, we know not to look at the stress results close to where we've cut that section. And we'd like to look at those stress results side by side with our global model results. So we'll go ahead and import those. and display those side by side with our breakout model. Here we can synchronize the views so that when we zoom or pan in one of the views, both of them will zoom and pan. Let's go ahead and select both of the views and we'll change our legend to refine our maximum so that we can better see the contours of the stress results around our rib. Creating a breakout or a submodel is easy with SimCenter 3D.